And caustic artist Andrea Bird discusses themes and techniques used in her painting, Where She's Been. So this painting is called Where She's Been, and I grew out of this photograph of a woman walking across a horizon line that developed as the piece progressed about where she's been in her life and where she's going. But the main thing about this piece was working in a grid again after years of working with encaustic, not in a grid. I developed it by putting on many layers of dark gray and black underneath, and then I measured and gouged out the squares, and then I had 121 little squares with which to work in. And each one was kind of like paying homage to different techniques and things that I've developed over the years. Um, from you know incorporating collage elements and organic elements. Um, this is a peony cut out in a square and then embedded right in the wax. Lots of different collage elements from photographs to fabric to barbed wire. So each one tells a different story about where I've been in my encaustic journey and just how much I love doing this medium. And to keep it maintained, I taped it with masking tape in some cases. I also made a window out of a cardboard so that I could isolate the square and work within it without the paint going off the edges. I really let my imagination go with this piece without being attached to any particular story, figuring that as a whole I would bring it together later on. So most of the piece was worked on flat, but at one point I put it up on an easel and worked with it to get the overall feeling of it and allowing drips to come down in certain places. And in some cases I gouged the drips off, in other places I left them on. You can see where they bridge the gap between the squares. And that was really interesting. That also felt like a first for me too, to be working on my pieces vertically rather than horizontally. There's lots of layers in these little squares. Like in here there's a photocopy transfer from an old engineering book, and then there's a flower petal on top, and then there's rust embedded in the wax, and then there's a drip that comes down from a square above. So my intention with this was to have a depth going on with each square that wasn't so busy that it, it couldn't work as a whole. And I like the idea of putting things in and then taking things out, leaving the impression of what was there before, this branch here was pressed into the wax and then taken out and then it's over here, it's in the wax in a different orientation but with the positive there, so it's left there and here it's left just with the shadow of itself. I used a lot of ironing techniques, like I laid in pieces of lace and then ironed it on top and then um, allowed the texture of the lace to come through but it's still very smooth, there's a fern on top of that that I found in the forest. So um, really trying to experiment with different kinds of techniques and seeing how they work together in a way that I hadn't before. And really letting it be playful and not worried about how, it, you know, how each individual one worked because I felt like each one could be an experiment and it, wouldn't, um, it, was, it would be easy to affect as a whole later on. So I like the play that's in this piece and the color. And this was really unexpected. When, the, when I put this photo down, I had no intention of creating this whole horizon here for the woman to walk on. And it just became so clear that that's what she needed. She needed this whole journey behind her and this, this one in front of her as well. So, you know, after doing encaustic for the last nine years now, I feel like I, I do have a history with this medium behind me. And, but still ways to go with it as well. So this piece is a real celebration of that, of where I've been with my encaustic. And it touches on lots of different themes. There's the words hold loosely are here in the center, and that's been a big part of my, my journey, is letting go of, it, of attachment to any particular outcome. I really love the beauty of the grid. I love how the grid creates order in the midst of all of the chaos, and um, I just think it has a real beauty of its own. And I got out of doing the grid for so long with my art because encaustic doesn't lend itself to that kind of containment. And so now it's, it's really exciting to be using the grid again with wax.
More of Andrea's encaustic art can be seen at andreabird.com and waxworksencaustics.com.